各位观众朋友们，大家好，欢迎收与收看 J 与 J 论坛，由我 Jimmy 妈妈健跟我们的好朋友 Jim Nowhere 为我们一起讨论这个礼拜的时事。Jim, what a what a week! How are you? I'm fine. I'm just trying to keep up with all of the chaos that's going on around us. Absolutely, I uh, chaos is the right word.、Uh, finally, in Houston, we got to enjoy a bit of California weather.、It、was nice and cool and dry. Yeah, I really love it. And in the meantime, enjoying. You know what's sad is that I did not get to see any of the Olympics, whether it's the opening ceremony or, I mean, I, first of all, I don't watch TV, but sports I usually do. But this is, I think, the app is NBC only, and there are a lot of. There's, I mean, I read about it. There are just so many things going on, and it's both sides. I mean, we could. What What, what is your take on Olympics this year?、Uh, well, first of all, I don't care to watch the Olympics. Okay,、um, it, it's it's a whole other world that really doesn't matter to me.、Mm -hmm. <laughs> and、uh, I, I I saw a friend of mine on another television show、uh, earlier this week, and people said, "How do you?" Have the time to accomplish so much, and he said, "Well, he said I don't play golf, so that frees up not only a lot of time but a great deal of frustration." And <laughs> that's kind of how I feel about the Olympics. Do you? You don't play golf. You really don't. No, I don't play golf. Same same thing.、Um, you may be the only real estate developer in this world that does not play golf. Yeah, yeah. I'm the only investment maker that don't play golf either. <laughs> well, we're in good company then. I'd rather、uh, read. Oh, I'd rather read. Or, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 And and part of the reason I don't play golf is I knew that if I played, I'd get addicted to it and I'd never be able to let it go. And when because we're competitive were, people, yeah. When my children were small and I was traveling all the time, I just couldn't see how I could go on a Saturday morning go get tea time with my buddies, and after having the children all week, my wife is going to say, "Oh, that's nice." No, that was not going to happen. No, and this is why you have a great family and relationship. You <laughs> give and you take and you understood.、Um, yeah. The time management is yes. I don't. I mean, I I have so many friends who wanted to play, but that really brings up another、uh, question of family balance and how to treat your partner correctly. Look, Jim, everything takes takes learning and executing.、Yeah. I mean,、exactly. whether it's yeah, it, it's not easy. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, no, that's that's absolutely right. Absolutely right. I love it when you bring up the snippet of Saturday morning doing that because those are from those from the heart. Those are things that we can learn. Our audience can learn is think、yeah. of. I mean, immediately that's what it should have. Anyways, that's great stuff. Yeah, yeah. yeah we're in the middle of the crazy season.、Uh, school is in the middle full string. We have no real holidays coming up. We have、uh, the economy is in shambles. Inflation is up seven point five percent. And as Asian American, we have so many controversies surrounding this particular Olympics.、Yeah. Uh, I, I, yeah, well, I didn't even get a chance to talk. Yeah, let's talk about what. What's your take on it?、Uh, without talking about the games itself specifically,、right. but politically and what it represents and why it's creating so much chatter. Well,、um, I can only give you just a couple of observations because, again, I have not paid attention to it very closely. But number one, I think it's an opportunity for China to showcase itself as a great worldwide leader,、um, to welcome the world there,、um, to show off its own attributes,、uh, probably to give its own athletes a home field advantage. Although I've always wondered what benefit that gives, but but I think that's that's that. And then the other thing is I. I am very concerned about the what's the right word the restrictions,、um, the local Chinese behavior relative to the、uh, relative to the athletes. There there seems to be quite a lot of consternation among the athletes about the way they're being treated, both for COVID and in other ways.、Um, I think it's interesting that the way that some American politicians are advising the athletes. Uh, don't express yourself politically. Be very quiet. Go in and do what you're going to do on the playing field, and then get ready to go home. So, if that's all the case, and it appears that it is, it somewhat defeats the purpose of the Olympics, which is to create、uh, broad-based internationalism, having countries work together,、uh, support each other, be competitive on the field, but be friends off the field,、uh, that kind of thing. So. Um, I think just as long as the Olympic Committee made the decision to、uh, to let China host the Olympics, 
as long as many countries, including the United States, agreed to let their athletes go there to compete, then let it happen. It's only two, two and a half weeks. Let it go. Come home. And then uh, hope for the best all the way around. Hope for people to be safe, not get injured. Hope they can return safely. Hope they have good memories. Let the best people win. And, uh, and then, I suppose, get back to politics and international affairs. I really don't like mixing the two. I love it. I, I agree with you. I think the majority of Americans think like this. I think what you just said hit, hit on the point. The media and the certain fractions of uh, political parties does it on purpose to gain views to, to serve their monetary purpose or to get their votes, whatever it is, to rile people up. And that's how you get hate and love. And yeah. it should not mix. Um, what the, the politicians are saying is a very small, very tiny part of the, the main, it's not the mainstream view about MacArthurism or dragon politics and this, this creating this new enemy, um, this, this war machine to, to, to have a, like the Cold War. Um, the athletes are there. Journalists are actually there, are happy, are appreciative. Um, there's, of course, of course going to be problems. Every host country that hosts Olympics has served a political purpose to show off the country's might, to, uh, you know, to, to increase its role standings. And China is doing the same thing. I mean, there's so many things we could say about China or us or any country if we want to focus on that. But in two mm -hmm. weeks, this is about corporation. This is about um, culturally um, diversity. But you know what he said about IOC, International Olympic Committee, about how they chose China. Uh, the fact is they are under a lot of criticism by saying they're too pro-China, they're too uh, kowtow to China. But you know what's sad? Who doesn't? Which corporation, whether it's public or private or profile from Nike to and the NBA, who doesn't mm -hmm. want to get into the largest market in the world? I mean, we, we're supposed to talk about we're a free market economy. If you want truly about freedom and democracy, how do you go against that and say, hey, for a company, I mean, international, I always see Olympics is still, is still run like a business. It is a business. There's bottom line. There's, they need to increase viewership. They want to maintain viable. And to do that, you have to get in the largest market. Now, does that, that bottom line and market share replace freedom of speech, replace certain fundamental rights? I mean, I'm not saying yes or no. And the fact is, no. when you go to a country, do you respect their laws and their culture? Or do we impose our will, the Western? With the, I mean, there's so many things to argue, but the main thing is what you said is true. Don't make sports and politics. It's two weeks. These athletes have a lot only in their lifetime. They only have a few years at their peak where they could compete for it. Cherish that. Give them the chance. Because, Jim, there's a lot of problems with whether it's U.S. or Chinese net the net, the internet attacking these athletes. There are a lot. And it's, it's not just our problem anymore. The whole world, China, they're doing the same thing, attacking their own athletes when they fail. Because you know what's crazy? The, the biggest controversy right now is American-born athletes who have Caucasian father and Asian Chinese mother or, or uh, Caucasian mother, Asian father. Either way, they're giving up their citizenship because China doesn't allow multiple uh, nationality. They're giving up their citizenship to compete for China. I mean, no yeah. one's going to blame them because that's, I mean, they're making millions, you know, over there, they're one, the only one over here, there might be one of 20, right? So you yeah. cannot blame them. They're young. I mean, this is great. People are, but their controversy is for us, my yeah. friends, they're mad at them for giving up over there. They're saying they're not real Chinese. Isn't that crazy that it's reversed yeah. now, you know? Well, that's been the case with Korean Americans going back over there as well. Or yeah. Japanese Americans going back to what I call the home country or the old country. Um, I mean, you're right about if we could separate sports and politics, that would be great. But what you cannot what you cannot separate is business and politics. Um, they are inextricably intertwined. Absolutely. And. Yes, I do believe in the free market. And so therefore, if a company, let's say a U.S. domicile company wants to go to China and compete for that big market and they choose to play by the Chinese rules, in other words, agree to censorship, agree to transfer some intellectual property, agree, agree, agree. That's their choice. Um, would I do it? No, but it's up to them. I'll never forget uh, about 
it was a quote from about 75 years ago. Procter and Gamble went to uh, China for the first time. And one guy said, um, we can't sell deodorant here. Um, people are too poor to buy it. And the other guy said, well, I see a billion people here. So that's two billion smelly armpits. They will buy the deodorant. Um, and so every market has its own characteristics. So if somebody wants to go do it, um, that's what I guess they can. Like, for instance, Apple has its products, I think, very close to 100 percent made in China. They're made by Foxconn, which is a Taiwanese company, as you know. But they have outsourced to China and Apple is very satisfied. OK, um, OK for them. Uh, I remember when Disney um, uh, first proposed having a uh, theme park in China. I believe it was outside of Hong Kong. Uh, there was one in Hong Kong, one in Shanghai. In, Sh in Shanghai. The one and, in Shanghai is the one that's controversial. And they were very, very afraid of um, giving up some of their intellectual property. And they were very afraid of having the theft of internet, uh, in, um, intellectual property. Eventually, they yielded, and the reason they yielded was because the Chinese market for people going to the movies was so large that they were willing to take that risk and pay some of the price. And I suppose, all things equal, they're happy with what they've done. Um, I, you know, I, don't, I don't know that, but that's the trade no, they make. No, they're happy, obviously, because they're still there. But Jim, have you thought about uh, what's crazy is the perspective from the other side? When they went to China, a lot of chatter amongst their citizen, not the government, the citizenship is that they should not allow Disney to come in. The Western way of brainwashing you, of imposing their values on you and all that. It also didn't come true. Why? Disney means something to you because it's our childhood. We grew up watching Disney movies, seeing their characters. In mm -hmm. other countries, you didn't grow up with this. When you grow up, you don't feel the same ties to the happiest place on earth. Even as an adult, not just I, I make excuses to say I bring my kids to Disney. No, it's for me and my, my spouse, too. We love Disney. It means something pure. I mean, it is whatever it means. It's a happy place. And the way yeah. they did it, I mean, the way the Walt Disney, they, the way they designed it, it's really the details, the everything is just there. And so I can't disagree or agree. And but I also know the way they increase their prices very soon it's not going to be affordable for for any for what it was intended for is for everyone right uh, yeah. or at least middle class it is impossible yeah. now it is ridiculous so to go back to yes they need to keep improving improving profit in order to keep this product out there mm -hmm. but what is the balance between profit and and you want to call it censorship you know i i want to give you an example okay mm -hmm. what we know about china it's what the media decides to tell us. We cannot just go over the firewall, go to China. China's media is censored by the government, there's no doubt. But at least they they might keep some things from you, but they will not release false news or uh, things that would that are absolutely wrong, like drinking bleach or pandemic is fake, you know, stuff like that. They will lie. I mean, they won't withhold information, but they're not going to straight up lie to you. I like, I like here where there's so many different media, there's different perspective, and they're all for profit. So they have to do extreme views to, to, to rile you up. Um, and then for people like me and you, we'll find out. We go and find the truth. It's hard. It takes time. Or we can decide hmm, the, you know, which one is real. But from the mass majority, they don't. But what people don't know about China is this. They have a very vibrant social media, Weibo. Mm -hmm. They have like a Twitter-like uh, thing. They have something like TikTok, right? That is exactly like TikTok. TikTok is from China. They have a firewall. Their citizens, anyone in China could very simply go on and go to US websites, go to YouTube. They could say whatever they want. I, this is a fact. They could say whatever they want. However, if they sound, say something wrong, they'll be shut down. They'll be tracked down. But in the meantime, they could see everything. That is very important because there's no way you could brainwash someone if they could see the perspective from the other side, the Western perspective. Mm -hmm. Secondly is, Yes, you still cannot criticize the government. You cannot, you know, mm -hmm. but slowly but surely, I can see a hope. They are starting to make changes to the accountability of the government officials. Look at Peng Shui, the tennis star. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What happened, you know? Um, look at how China is changing the way they react to it.
Mm-hmm. But most importantly is, this is big news in China that I want to I mention. Mm-hmm. A normal citizen, a TikTok, uh, Douyin, they call it Douyin, the Douyin star, okay? Somebody like me or you, they could just take their phone, start videoing stuff live, post it online. And everyone's like, wow, right? This is somebody. This is not a government official. He's not. He randomly went to a rural village and videoed a young, a, a middle-aged woman chained by her neck. Modern day slavery with eight children. Mm. He posted and said, what is going on in this world? This is a week ago. I'm going to tell you, I'm going to tell you why this matters. This is Xu Zhou, Mr. Dong. This, mm-hmm. pro- this proved to me, this mattered to me, okay? Our audience will know this. Mm-hmm. Social media, the power. He called it out. Everyone's like, what is going on? You know, the majority of Chinese citizens are middle class and they are educated. This is not right. Within the first few days, the husband became a media star. Mm-hmm. There were they were social media people that went and interviewed the kids and say, you're a great dad. You have eight kids, you know? Mm-hmm. The government's response was that women was legally married to this man. They have eight children and that she's chained up because she is uh, have psychological issues and attacks children and dogs. That's not acceptable. Let me tell you why. The underlying issue, China has always had a problem of a one-child policy up until a few years ago. Second, mm-hmm. everybody wants boys. Nobody wants girls. So mm-hmm. and there's a very important issue underlying, not as maybe not now as more as human trafficking, where women and boys are being kidnapped and sold. This is a problem all over the world. This is a problem that we have, but the China is there. So it's, it's under the surface. The government don't want to admit it because they can't solve it. And it happened, it's been there for 40, 50 years. The people know it, the people know it, mm-hmm. and they're angry, right? They want something to be done about it, but they don't want it to make it a national, it's not about for other countries because they need to fix it. But this little ripple, this man, Mr. Shuka, he, in Shuzhou, he videoed it. It prompted the government to say, the local government to say, oh, this is, they're married, he was chained because of that. Nobody accepted that. The, the people, social media got so angry it went from the local government to the county, to the state. It went to the federal government. The second response they had is, we're sorry. We need to investigate. She she was, she was, came to this area from a far area. She was begging. You know, she was a homeless person, and they took him in. That's also a lie because it's completely opposite of what they said. Finally, a week later, the government admitted this lady was ki- – this girl was kidnapped and mm-hmm. sold to this family. They know, the government officials know, because all these poor farmers are boys and there's no women. They need to produce a offspring, traditional. So this yeah. is all accepted for years. Does that make it right? No. This poor woman is a human being. The citizens of China rise up and, for, and force the government. So the local officials, the party secretaries, they have all been fired. Mm-hmm. This will never happen five years ago, 10 years ago. I'm very worked up to talk about this because you see this. And this is happening during the Olympics. Before, they would just shut it down. They would erase everything, shut it down, and then you never know what happened. There's no accountability. But well, my point is, in China, social media, does it is open. There is an internet presence. There is a way to change. As long as it doesn't affect, think talking about the party leadership, when right. it's local, local politics, local government, uh, and also very importantly is whether there's a support amongst the masses, you know, amongst the billion people. It's amazing to me. I think that's important. It, it showcases a, a morally and, 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 and improving general population. Well, you said, you said a lot. And I think back Sorry, to yeah. Disney for a moment. Yeah. Um, what better ambassador for the United States than Disney to export its content to China? Soft power. Yes. Influence. Many people have said the U.S. is weak because it imports so many goods and countries like China or Germany are strong because they export so many goods. In, in a way, that is true. But we've known for a long time that what the U.S. exports is culture and exports uh, freedom and exports, in many cases, uh, human rights and exports um, cultural values. Uh, A couple of great examples of that a generation ago. Why was uh, um, the U.S. successful in breaking down the Soviet Union without firing a shot? Yes, we had the military might. But fundamentally, when about 10 years earlier, uh, McDonald's opened their first restaurant in, in Moscow, it 
it opened the floodgates for U.S. culture, goods, and services. And the Russians said, there's no way we want to keep living the way we're being oppressed. We want access to Western goods. We want access to Western culture. Same thing, and I know it's a very sore spot for China, but during the Tiananmen Square problems, what was the greatest uh, symbol of freedom? It was the fax machine. People all over the United States were faxing information to people all over China, and there's no way that the Chinese censors could stop it. And it created a big popular backlash. And the truth be told, um, many people don't like the internet today because it's full of misinformation and and it one of its weaknesses is people can manipulate it and use it. I grant all of that. But fundamentally, really what happens is after a while with all kinds of complex communication, ultimately the truth wins out and the popular values express themselves. And I think we see that happening. I'll give you another example here in the United States. Many uh, Democratic govern governors um, in liberal states, we call them blue states, um, have been interested in continuing mask mandates and vaccine mandates. All of a sudden, last week, seven states, California, New York, Delaware, Illinois, all of a sudden, reverse themselves. I mean, within one or two days, all of them said, oh, we're giving up on mask mandates. So something's going on. And many people uh, that, that I know, I think probably cynical, say, well, it's amazing what a coming election, the midterms, will do uh, to make leadership accountable and flexible. You know, so ultimately. The popular will does win out in a free Jim, society. Jim, yeah. the, the way to win down, I agree with you. I, mean, I told my friends, hey, liberal or not, these states are taking, I mean, from the very beginning, our reaction was either you choose a complete lockdown like China. Right. They, they've lost, what, a few thousand lives compared to almost 900, more than 900,000, almost a million people dead here. Those numbers don't lie. I thought almost a million died here. A few thousand died there. Either you choose to complete lockdown like the beginning, which will never work here, or you should have just opened it up because there's no point. By, by being in the middle and, and every state having its own way, we're here, we are today. Economy's in shamble. Numbers are not going down. I mean, everybody loses. So, yes, I agree. But, but at that time, nobody knew. I'm not finding excuses for Trump's administration, even though he started it. I, I'm not finding excuses justifying for him. They didn't know either. And I'm not going to justify what's the current administration doing. We mm -hmm. can go back to economy, inflation. Um, mm -hmm. We, but as somebody that does this for a living, we've mm -hmm. been saying inflation has been artificially suppressed for many, many years. That is healthy for it to come up. I mean, for thirty years we've had a artificially <laughs> suppressed number. A little bit of inflation is healthy. Jumping up like this in one year, very badly done. But you know what? This is necessary. This, this is absolutely necessary. We, I mean, in other countries, prices of goods is, has been up. We're the only country that's able to keep it down. Uh, whether it's for politics to get voters, the fact is that's not that's not natural. Natural uh, shouldn't went, shouldn't have went up this high this quickly. Um, I don't know. I mean, this is going to be very bad for this current administration. It's going to be bad for everybody up for election. Uh, you know, another big deal that I don't think we. Sh I mean, we didn't have time. We should have talked about it. Is what uh, Mike Pence said, represented what a lot of conservatives thought, is to rebuttal him and say, this is not true. It wasn't stolen. And then move on and win it all back without pandering to one person's delusion. I applaud him for doing that because oh, he, yeah, I do he's, I, I, he's, I do he's committing political suicide in a way. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. No, uh, but as a practical matter, yes, he has done a very brave thing. He did a brave thing on January 6th. Um, on the other hand, uh, even though I presume he would be very interested in becoming president, I think the reality of him becoming president one way or another uh, is very small. So in a way, he had nothing to, he had nothing to lose. Well, a lot of people have 
a lot or nothing to lose, but yet nobody could came, come out and say that, which is we all know, whether you're liberal or, or conservative, that there's no steal. I mean, there's no fraud, period. Mm-hmm. And what Trump, whether there is or not, actually, is what Trump is asking him to do. And the one that is is not a democracy. That's not what our country is. This is not American. It's un-American. So right. Pence protected our foundation, our system, uh, went above party politics. And that's something we should applaud. Um, and that what I agree with him or not, as his policy or not, he's somebody that this is what America means. This is what it's always been. We need more instead of people like Trump. But then the sad thing is most Republican leaders cannot openly say this. They they know the people, the voters are still there. I mean, they're still still in the cult. So we shall see what happens this election. But that is big news to me. We're, yeah, no, it is big news. I think what's I think what's happening uh, within the Republican Party is an example of what the new governor of Virginia, Glenn Youngkin, the way he played it. And I think as time goes on, more and more. Um, Republican politicians are going to do it that way. Um, so. Try to capture much, not all, but much of Trump's base without having Trump as a participant or an ally. And um, then, and also then build from there. Build from there. If if Trump is part of a campaign, my, my theory is it's almost impossible to expand beyond the base. Um, no. No Democrat for sure, and very few uh, independent independent moderates come over to vote for a Trump back um, candidate. And that the fight will be wider and wider, and the gap is being wider and wider. Um, I've used the uh, the analogy if you've and maybe I've said it on the show I don't recall, but if you have a cup of coffee uh, for dinner and you leave a half full glass. Um, overnight and you come back the next morning, what do you have? It has shrunk. Um, You have a ring around it and the level is lower because the water in it has evaporated. It's more concentrated, but it's smaller. That's what Trump's base is. It's shrinking, but it's becoming um, more uh, strident, um, more separated, all of those, it's it, it, it's becoming more concentrated, but smaller. I hope so. I hope so. Yeah. I, I, feel I, like, I, I feel like I feel like more that's right. And I think I think more and more Republicans are are going to uh, are, are going to have to figure out how to reach across to the larger pool of independents. And and Mr. Youngkin did that beautifully, absolutely beautifully. Um, and I think there's opportunities, political opportunities on most issues. Um, Finally, finally, going back to, to the moderates, to, to what's good for the majority and not pander to this cult and not fall for mm-hmm. these rhetoric that is just horrendous, damaging mm-hmm. to both sides, to, to, to extremism on both sides is just ridiculous. Um, mm-hmm. Thank you, Jim. I appreciate it. And we shall continue this important conversation next week. Yeah. Uh, let's hope we have a better outlook next week. Yeah, let's hope we bring home at least one or two gold medals from. Uh, I thought we did, Chloe yeah, Kim. I, I think we have one. Yeah, as yeah. yesterday we had one. Yeah, I mean, we should be for fine. for a country as big and as strong as the United States to have one. That's really an embarrassment. But okay, you know, I I I know in the end we always catch up. I mean, I can't imagine that. I mean, when it comes to sports. We, we have the best system, whether it's a sponsorship or for profit or the coaching system where, I mean, athletes, everybody comes here for training. We have the right. best of the best. Right. I have no, I have never doubted that. I don't care what China does or Russia. They are not going to catch up right. with us. Right. Um, so I'm happy with that. Um, we shall continue this next week. Take okay. care, Jim. Good. Thank you, Jimmy. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.